So we have one more result to mention on this topic of concavity before we move on to curve sketching in general. Uh, and that is the second derivative test. Um, so here is the second derivative test. It's another test that you can use for deciding if a given critical point is either a maximum or a minimum. Okay? Um, so if you have a critical number corresponding to a place where the der first derivative is 0, then you can look at the second derivative and look at the sign. Right? If the second derivative is positive, you've got a local min. If the second derivative is negative, you've got a local max. OK, not so bad. Uh, visually, this is kind of clear, right? If you're, if you're at a minimum, right, your graph looks something like that. You've got that horizontal tangent, and the graph lies above the tangent, so it's concave up, right? At a maximum, you're looking at something like that, right? You've still got that horizontal tangent, but now the graph is below, so you're concave down, right? That's, that's really all there is to it with the second derivative test. Right? It's a fairly straightforward result. Of course, you could give a formal proof, but essentially, um, the, the picture here more or less illustrates what's going on. Now, the second derivative test is, you know, I don't know, so some people like the second derivative test and they get excited, they want to use it. Um, contain, oops, contain ing. Uh, but in most cases, that first derivative test that you already learned is still the better test, okay? Uh, and, and there are a few reasons for that. One reason is that the second derivative test only applies if the first derivative is zero, right? So at critical numbers that correspond to places where the first derivative is undefined, second derivative test is useless, okay? Another problem is that the test can be inconclusive if the second derivative is zero, okay? Um, so for example, if you were looking at something like, uh, you know, y equals x to the four, right? So y prime is four x cubed, so you know you have a critical number at the origin, right? Critical point at the origin. Uh, you go to the second derivative, you get 12x squared, right? And it's still zero. So you don't know. Based on the second derivative test, you can't decide whether you've got a max or a min. But the first derivative test says, well, look, just draw your number line. You've got a critical number at zero. It's an odd power of x, right? So you know it's positive here, negative here. It goes from negative to positive. So you've got a minimum, right? So the first derivative test can succeed where the second derivative test fails, OK? Um, Another reason that you might prefer the first derivative test is that if you're simply doing a problem where you just need to decide if, you're, if you've got a relative max or a relative min, um, well, if you've already got the sign diagram sorted out for your first derivative, why would you bother doing the extra work of finding the second derivative, right? Especially if it's something like, a, let's say, a rational function where the second derivative is often more complicated than the first derivative, right? If there's going to be more work involved, yeah, do the first derivative test. Um, where the second derivative test can come in handy, uh, situations where maybe it's not so easy to determine the signs of the first derivative. That could happen maybe if you're dealing with like trig functions or logarithms or something like that and you're not quite confident on the signs. That might be a place to use it, right? Um, if the second derivative test is easy to compute or if you have to do it anyway, then sure, use the second derivative test, okay? Um, the result does come in handy, but most of the time you're probably going to find yourself using the first derivative test instead. Um, we'll, we'll stop here, we'll come back, we'll do one example, and then we're going to move on to curve sketching.